Death threats over a selfie? The Miss Universe pageant contestant from Iraq has been getting death threats in her homeland after posting a selfie with Miss Israel on Instagram. As Iraq's first contestant in 45 years, 27-year-old Sarah Aydin was very popular, but then soon changed after she took a selfie with Miss Israel at our Gandelsman. Aydin and Gandelsman took a photo together with the caption, Peace and love for Miss Iraq and Miss Israel. Although the image has received over 8,000 likes, Aydin was bombarded with hateful comments. But why? Israel and Iraq don't have formal diplomatic relations. The selfie, plus controversy over her choice to compete in a bikini for the Miss Universe swimsuit round, led to Aydin receiving death threats. Things went from bad to worse for Miss Iraq as death threats were also sent to her family who were in Iraq, forcing them to later flee to the U.S. The Miss Iraq organization also asked Aydin to remove the picture or they will remove her Miss Iraq title. Refusing to remove the selfie, Aydin posted a follow-up on Instagram in Arabic, saying the selfie doesn't mean she agrees with Israel's policies, while adding that she apologized to those who thought it was harmful to the Palestinian cause. Ms. Israel appeared on Israeli television last week and defended Aydin by saying she did it so that people can understand that it's possible to live together. Keep watching for more stories of selfies gone wrong. Uh, she might want to improve her selfie game. This woman will probably think twice before she snaps selfies in the future, since when she did so last Thursday in a Los Angeles art gallery, the result was 200,000 US dollars in damages. The woman was viewing an installation called Hypercane, which was a collaboration between Hong Kong artist Simon Birch and other artists including Gabriel Chan, Jacob Blitzer, and Gloria Yu. Prior to the incident, CCTV footage showed visitors carefully admiring and walking around a room decorated with dozens of rectangular pedestals holding sculpted crowns and other headpieces. Then came the clumsy visitor and her friend. Her friend used an actual camera to photograph the wondrous works. Meanwhile, the clumsy one decided to squat down and snap her selfie, which led to her falling backward into one of the displays, turning the entire exhibition into a game of dominoes. Yikes! After wrecking much of the exhibition, the bumbling visitor actually remained calm and even put one headpiece back onto its pedestal. According to the exhibition's marketing team, three of the sculptures were permanently damaged and others to varying degrees. Factoring in the artist's work time, potential art sales lost, and the repair costs, the estimated damage came out to a total bill of $200,000. Some had speculated the incident was a stunt, but the exhibition confirmed to Fox News that the accident was real and explained it would be irrational for the artists to damage their own work in the hopes of gaining more fame. The art show is already back on display, with one change. Visitors can no longer walk between the rows of art pieces, though photography is still encouraged. Suspects take selfies on stolen iPad, upload them to iCloud. A pair of non-tech-savvy criminals made a costly mistake after stealing a Texas man's laptop, cash, and iPad, then took celebratory post-theft selfies that made their way to the victim's iCloud account. On January 8th, 20-year-old Dorian Marquis Walker Gaines and his brother from another mother, Dylan, were looking for some quick cash. They thought they hit it big when they broke into Randy Schaefer's truck and made off with his MacBook Pro, $5,000 in cash, and his iPad. With everything going right for the young men, they opted to continue having it their way by stopping for a quick bite to eat at Burger King just two miles down the street. These two boneheads took 17 selfies using Schaefer's iPad, flaunting their newfound Benjamins, and shot this Burger King ball and video. This, my good people, is what we get from a good night's hustle. We're doing a big face being over here. New, old. We just hustle. Don't don't worry about no how. twenties, no twenties, no fives, no tens. I, read it. The budget-conscious ballers next hopped across the street to Starbucks, where they connected to free Wi-Fi to post their video to YouTube and Facebook. Schaefer later discovered his truck had been broken into when he was headed over to work. Frustrated and feeling violated, a week passed before it dawned on Schaefer to log on to his iCloud account, which is when he spotted the stupid suspect selfies. Houston police successfully identified Gaines, who had previous run-ins with the law, thanks to the words he had tattooed on his chest. Brilliant. 
These idiots have since unsurprisingly been arrested. Chinese rooftop climber fails at roof climbing. A Chinese climber's feelings were crushed, along with some other stuff, when he tried to scale a tall building for some selfies. Wu Yongning was apparently known for making rooftopping videos and had quite a few followers on China's Twitter knockoff Weibo. Rooftopping involves climbing tall city buildings without safety equipment, and of course, endless selfies are mandatory. Wu was participating in a rooftopping challenge on November 8th for prize money when the rooftop turned out to be too challenging. While trying to do some pull-ups, rather than dominating the skyscraper, they were scraping him off 62 stories below. Guess that's what happens when you live life on the edge. You fall off sometimes. Parenting fail. An ordinary day at a museum in the UK went horribly wrong when a family's failed photo op damaged an 800-year-old coffin. According to the BBC, on August 4th, a family was visiting Pretty Well Priory Museum in South End on Sea. Hoping to snap a morbid photo, the parents reportedly reached over an exhibit barrier to put their child inside an 800-year-old ancient sandstone coffin. Ah, oh, you know this isn't gonna end well. Here's some quick facts about the stone coffin. It was found on the grounds of the monk's residence in 1921 and has been displayed at the Pretty Well Priory Museum ever since. It used to contain a skeleton that the museum says could have belonged to a senior monk, so arguably it's a valuable artifact. Well, in the process of picture taken, the offending family managed to knock a chunk off of the sarcophagus. <sighs> Fantastic. They didn't say a word and fled the scene, but were caught on the museum's surveillance cameras. In response to the photo op incident, Pretty Well Priory Museum's conservator Claire Reed said the staff was shocked and upset, but added that the damage was repairable. The museum said they didn't expect people to actually get into the artifacts, and they plan to completely enclose the stone coffin in the future.